Shalom family. Welcome to another teaching from Tale Ministries. The title of this teaching is Politics, Prophecy, and Reparations. Asking Pharaoh to make things right after 400 years will do what? So this is going to be a teaching slash commentary uh, on the reparations movement. Uh, what I think is going to happen um, and, you know, the validity, validity of the hashtag ADOS movement. So uh, I'm for the movement, <clears throat> but I don't think the movement's going to work. And so as, as we go along, I'm, I'm going to tell you why. <clears throat> this is basically from a prophetic viewpoint and not so much from a sociological viewpoint. So the ADOS, American Descendants of Slavery, as we mentioned in one of the previous shows, we support the ADOS movement because we believe that you have not because you ask not. We also believe that the current call for reparations is more than likely divinely inspired. We believe that this is probably part of the rattling of the bones of Ezekiel 37. Do I think this movement will succeed? Not with human effort. I do look at this as Moses saying, let my people go. So I look at this movement of ADOS, the call for reparations, as the call of Moses saying, let my people go. <clears throat> All of this aligning with the 400 year captivity. The call for reparations at this point in time is not a coincidence. The key to reparations, in my opinion, is the continued awakening of Israel. This will cause the Gentiles to realize that they owe God more than they owe us. Expecting sympathy from most people who care not that your children are killed in the streets by police will not give a dime out of their pocket. A sudden case of morality will not raise its head. Knowing who we are and who they persecuted will get you reparations. Isaiah 60 will occur and the nations will pay. So I look at this, this call for reparations as, as I mentioned before, the rattling of the bones. Israel was thought to be dead. Israel is making noise. Israel is saying, I'm here. Israel is saying, I need payment for what was done to my ancestors. Moses is saying, let my people go. Now, in this current effort, we are saying, give me my money. Pay me what you owe. So, let my people go. Exodus 9. Then the Lord said to Moses, go to Pharaoh and say to him, this is what the Lord, the God of the Hebrews says. Let my people go so that they may worship me if you refuse to let them go and continue to hold them back the hand of the lord will bring a terrible plague on your livestock in the field on your horses donkeys and camels and on your cattle sheep and goats but the lord will make a distinction between the livestock of israel and that of egypt so that no animal belonging to the israelites will die so you all know our position in terms of uh, dual fulfillment types and shadows so just as we believe there's a second exodus you know is there's a lot of things that happen in the first exodus that's going to happen in the second exodus okay one of them being the call to let my people go now in my opinion and you know this is this is my opinion just what I'm seeing happening in the world because you know I believe we're at the end of the 400 years I believe that all of this is the signs of us being delivered. Now, as I mentioned before, if it doesn't happen, then so be it. We move on. We live our lives. But I'm trying to convey what I see. And just as Moses went to Pharaoh, Moses said, let my people go. Just as Pharaoh did not want to let God's people go. God hardened his heart. This is what's going to happen to America. America cannot get past racism. They cannot get past thinking of us in terms of 
you know, lower class and uh, basically a burden on their society. So they're going to get upset that we're asking for them to pay what they owe. But they don't think they owe anything. So how do you force the people to pay you that believe they owe you nothing? Well, it wasn't me. It was my ancestors. I don't feel I should have to pay for my ancestors where well, God thinks differently. So pay what you owe. A book from Raleigh of Boondocks. For those who are Boondock fans. Pay what you owe. That's the call. Now Isaiah 60 says, Then thou shalt see and flow together, and thine heart shall fear and be enlarged, because of the abundance of the sea shall be converted unto thee. Unto thee. The forces of the Gentiles shall come unto thee. So the Gentiles are going to pay. They don't want to pay. They don't plan to pay. They plan to get away with all of the wealth that they've stolen from our ancestors' labors. But they're going to pay. But like I said, their hearts are going to be hardened, just like Pharaoh's. Judgment comes first. Judgment must come first on America because Pharaoh will not let you go. He will not pay what he owes. James chapter 5, verses 1 through 5. Go to now, you rich men. Weep and howl. For your misery shall come upon you. Your riches are corrupted and your garments are moth-eaten. Your gold and silver is cankered, and the rust of them shall be a witness against you, and shall eat your flesh as it were fire. You have heaped treasure together for the last days. Behold, the hire of the laborers who have reaped down your fields, which is of you kept back by fraud, crieth, and the cries of them which have reaped are entered into the ears of the Lord of the Sabbath. You have lived in pleasure on the earth. And being wanton, ye have nourished your hearts as in a day of slaughter. So, America has not paid the laborers what they owe. And the cry has gone to heaven. They have nourished themselves or fattened themselves up for the day of slaughter. Judgment comes first. Exodus 7, 3. And I will harden Pharaoh's heart and multiply my signs and my wonders in the land of Egypt. America's heart is being hardened just like Pharaoh. So the call is going out. Make it right. The call is being out. Going out. Pay my people what you owe. That a man sows, he reaps. God is saying, let my people go, but America is saying, nay. America is saying, no, we will not let them go. America is saying, we will not pay them. Because you know, if they pay us reparations, what happens? We're going to leave. Now, whether or not you believe we're Israel, that's another fact, another, another, another matter, but we're going to leave. If you give us enough money, to take care of ourselves and take care of our families, we're going to leave. They don't want you to leave. There will be no more football games. There will be no more basketball, at least any that anybody would want to pay to watch. There will be no more dancing and singing. Not that anybody really would want to watch. Does Sweden have the greatest singers and dancers and football players and basketball players? No, I don't think so. You're a commodity. They're not going to pay you because if they pay you, you're gone. And then you got the others who are, you know, racist because, you know, they're like, I'm not paying them niggers anything. It'd be a cold day in hell before I pay you. That's what they think. Because they don't like you. So let's look at this video by Lisa Haven. It's very interesting. 
because she's supposed to be a Christian. Now, in my opinion, she is a Christian. She is a European Christian. She has Europeanized doctrine. She don't have biblical doctrine. If you look at what they say they believe and compare what they say they believe to the Bible, it doesn't match up. They have their own ideology. This is what these three candidates are running on. Uh, if you elect us, right, the three of us or one of us, then we're going to give you money and more money and more money. Just vote for us. You see, because that is how the Democrat Socialist Party wins. And that's it. By promising you a handout, by saying, I'm going to do everything I can to give you, give you, give you, give. There is no such thing as free lunch. There is no such thing as a free handout. And this is exactly what they're doing. So just this is a scam and a sham in order to get your votes. And it's going to flip America inside out and turn into race wars. Uh, th that's that's all I could say if this actually did go through. But this. So. Not giving us reparations is going to cause a race war. Why? We're not going to do anything because we're not going to fight because you're giving us money and wealth. So that must mean you're going to cause the race war. She's supposed to be a Christian. Where's the love that they talk about? Where's the mercy? Where's the do unto others as you would have them do unto you? It's not there. This is American Christianity. This is Europeanized Christianity. This is hip hypocrisy. Now, they don't want to make it right, and they're not going to make it right because their hearts are being hardened. Now, to me, I'm like, let's not get upset about it. It is what it is. It is what it is, family. They're not going to give us reparations, not of their own accord. Now, we're going to get it, but they are not going to give it to us. But see, they have to be given opportunity. Just like the Most High gave Pharaoh the opportunity. He said, let my, let my people go. Pharaoh said to Moses, I don't know your God. God said, you're going to find out who I am. Same thing with America. Now, the plagues came upon Egypt to convince them. Now, for those of you who follow this ministry and follow our end time prophecy teachings, you understand the plague that's coming upon America. It is the plague of war. And we see the plagues of war all around, hovering around America. Wars and rumors of wars. Think about this, and this is to the Gentiles out there. If God doesn't judge you for what you've done to our ancestors, do you think he would be just and fair? If God judged ancient Egypt for what they did to our ancestors, do you not think he will not judge America for what you all have done to us and continue to do today? I mean, you all raped us, killed us, you know, you kidnapped our families, you you separated families, you stole our heritage and identity, um, you know, the police continue to kill us today, but you are quiet, but yet you're a Christian. See, you could call yourself anything. You could call yourself a car. It doesn't mean you're a car. What did Yeshua say? You will know them by what? Their fruit. But do you see fruit in Lisa Haven? I don't see any fruit. I don't see any love. I don't see any compassion. Because a righteous person would say, yes, you owe them. I'm just saying, family. That's what a righteous person would do. Like we do. We say, you know what? The Indians, you owe them too. Yes, you do. 
Now we come in five hours first. Now those who are believers in Yeshua and believe the scriptures and who study the scriptures know that you're not going to give it to us of your own free will. We know this. So let's listen to another person. And this is somebody you all know. This is Bernie Sanders. US is the legacy of income inequality in the US. What is your position on reparations to the descendants of slaves? Well, as I just indicated, there are massive disparities uh, that must be addressed. Uh, there is legislation that I like introduced uh, by Congressman Jim Clyburn. It's called the 102030 legislation, which focuses federal resources in a very significant way on distressed communities, communities that have high levels of poverty. So as I've just indicated, you know, I think we have to do everything that we can to end institutional racism in this country. It is not acceptable to me that the rate of childhood poverty among the African American community is over 30 percent in this country. That is beyond belief that African Americans die from cancer at higher rates than whites. So we're going to do everything we can to put resources into distressed communities and improve lives for those people who have been hurt from the legacy of slavery. So what is your position specifically on reparations? I ask the question because Elizabeth Warren, Julian Castro, they've indicated they, they well, want to support. What does that support. mean? What do they mean? The I'm not sure that anyone's very clear. What I've just said is that I think we must do everything that we can to address the massive level of disparity that exists in this country. I'll tell you what they mean, because Elizabeth Warren has said black families have had a much steeper hill to climb. We need systematic structural changes to address that. Julian Castro has said, well, I have I just... long thought that this country would be better off if we did find a way to do that. Reparations. Well, I just, I agree with what Elizabeth said. So you would, support, you would support well, reparations? But read what she said. What does that mean? She means, I think, I don't want to put words into her mouth, is what I said. So, family, this is a democratic socialist. You think he's going to give you reparations? I mean, he's one of the few who have some level of sympathy towards your plight, but yet is against reparations. So, if this democratic socialist is not looking to give you reparations, do you think the conservative right wing is going to give you reparations? Mm, nope, I don't think so. They're not going to do it unless they're forced to. It's not going to happen until the Most High forces them to. Of course, sake her. Jeremiah 51. We would have healed Babylon, but she is not healed. Forsake her. And let us go everyone into his own country. For her judgment reached unto heaven and is lifted up even to the skies. The Lord hath brought forth our righteousness. Come and let us declare in Zion the work of the Lord our God. Make bright the arrows, gather the shields. The Lord hath raised up the spirit of the king of the Medes. For his devices against Babylon to destroy it. Because it is the vengeance of the Lord, the vengeance of his temple. So the Most High says, guess what? Make bright the arrows. Gather the shields. Why? Because the Lord had raised up the spirit of the kings of the Medes, Iran, for his devices against Babylon to destroy it. The Most High said, we would have healed Babylon, but she's not healed. The Most High gave them a chance for repentance, but they would not repent. Now they're going to tell you, we repent, we're sorry, we're sorry for what our ancestors did to you. We really are. Say, so, okay, well, you know, make us whole. But we didn't do that to you. Our ancestors did. We don't owe you. Our ancestors did. They owe you. But yet, they prospered from it. Now, some are going to say, I'm poor as well. I don't have a dime. Some of you all are richer than me. That doesn't negate what has been done. That doesn't negate that this system that you all have voted in and created 
has not destroyed our people, killed our people, destroyed our economies, destroyed our homes, killed our people, hung them from trees. But we're supposed to forget. So, you know, you all want to say, you know, don't forget what Hitler did to the Jews, but forget what America and all these other Western nations and all, you know, Europeanized nations did to to the blacks around this world who are the true Hebrew Israelites of the Bible. Forget what, what they've gone through. We don't owe them. You know why they don't owe us in their minds? Because we have no one to contend for us. Now, we're trying to fight for ourselves. But that's like us, our ancestors that is, fighting against ancient Egypt with all their weapons, all their power, all their alliances, and say, you know what, y'all gonna give us what you owe. Nope, not gonna happen. You need a deliverer. The Most High will deliver us, and the Most High will give us what they owe. See, the thing is, family, they don't believe that we are the true Hebrew Israelites of so the Bible. They, they, they know we are growing. I saw something at the Southern Poverty Law Center that says, expect this movement to continue to grow. Now, as you all know, you know, we don't agree with some of the camp doctrine, but, you know, the problem is they're growing. We're growing. We're realizing who we are. But yet, do you hear them really talking about this awakening? Whether negatively or positively? I mean, you know, you had that one ish incident that they talked about, but they don't want to bring too much attention to it because if you bring more attention to it, it's going to be, yes, they are the people of the book. Oh, now what are we going to do? Modern slave owners. The modern day slave owners do not want you to have justice. Just like Pharaoh did not want to let the people go. God will harden this nation's heart. Let's be honest here. Most whites do not like black people. And most of the world does not like black people. Nothing has really changed. Matthew 24, 9. Then shall they deliver you up to be afflicted and shall kill you. And you shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake. In my opinion, a lot of this occurred during the time of the Inquisition and after. Now, a lot of this did occur after 70 AD because our people were all over the place and, you know, they were in many countries and definitely in Europe. Uh, but, you know, a lot of the fulfillment of this piece where they shall deliver you up to be afflicted and shall kill you and you shall be hated of all nations for my name's sake. That occurred, in my opinion, during the Inquisition. And doing the Atlantic slave trade. Now, many modern day Europeanized Christians or those indoctrinated by European theology believe that this is for the future and that this is going to be what the Christian has to go through. But I make the case that this has already occurred. Because during the Inquisition, they did deliver our people up to be afflicted. And they did kill us. And we are hated of all nations. For his namesake. So they, during the Inquisition, they killed you in the name of who? Jesus. Your Savior. Depends on how you want to reinterpret that, that scripture. And we're going to look at that a little closer. So the word, the same word onoma, used for namesake, is used in Matthew 7.22 as well. It says in Matthew 7.22, many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name, and in thy name call, cast out devils, and in thy name done many wonderful works. So it's in his name they did these things. So the Inquisition killed us in the name of Jesus. What is the Jesuits, the society of what? Jesus. Or using the name of Jesus. They killed us in his name. And he's our God. He's our brother. And they killed us in his name. So we're going to rephrase that. Then shall they deliver you up to be afflicted and shall kill you. And ye shall be hated of all nations in my name. 
using my name. This is from America Being an Accurate Description of the New World by John Ogilvy. The Portuguese that dwelt on this island informed the Netherlanders that few lived above 50 years there. Yet notwithstanding, the great gain tempted them to tarry several of them having two or three hundred Negroes that worked in the sugar mills. That John III, King of Portugal, sent a colony thither above 200 years before whom though the wholesome, unwholesome air destroyed, yet the place was not left desolate. For he sent new inhabitants who first settled in Guinea, next in Angola, and lastly on the island of St. Thomas, or Sao Tomé, that so they might be the better used to the air. That the said king sold all those Jews for slaves that refused to embrace the Roman religion, and caused their children to be baptized, from whom, coming thither in great numbers, most of the present inhabitants were descended. So all of these Negroes, who are Jews, were sold as slaves. All, if you notice, if you go back, you find out all of this stuff in Spain, the Spanish Inquisition, the Portu Portuguese, all of that was against the Jews. Now. Modern Christendom will sell you on the Fox Books of Martyrs. The Fox Book, Book of Martyrs emphasizes Christian persecution. But if you go read some of the other books about the Inquisition, it was against the black Jews. So they converted to Roman Catholicism. And this is from the Jews and Moors in Spain by Krostkov Joseph. And lashed the populace into a relentless fury because of the visitation of the plague and the breach of contract on the part of the Jews. The king's creed awoke again simultaneous, simultaneously with the reawakening of his greed. He issued an edict which threw even that of the Torquemada tor into the shade. All Jewish children below 14 years of age were torn from their parents' arms. Dragged into the church, baptized, those under three years of age were given to Christians to receive a Christian education, or in other words, to be raised as slaves. Those between three and ten years of age were put on board of a ship and conveyed to the newly discovered unwholesome island of St. Thomas, called Ijas Perdidas, the island of perdition, or Isle of Perdition which was colonized by Portuguese condemned criminals to fare there as best they could. Those between 10 and 14 years were sold as slaves. Then indeed the cup of, of their affliction was full to the brim. It was a stern truth which Lenau uttered. So if you look at this, right, compare that to the previous one that we looked at, um, America, uh, you know, a history of, of the new world, right? An, or an accurate description of the New World, we saw where? Where did they send those black Negroes, those Negroes, those Jews? They sent them where? To St. Thomas. We saw that. Where did they send these Jewish children? To St. Thomas. These are black Jews, the true Hebrew Israelites. Now, this is from Africa being an accurate description of the regions of Egypt by John Ogilvy. Many Jews also are scattered over this region, some natives boasting themselves of Abraham's seed, inhabiting both sides of the river Niger. Others are, uh, are Asian strangers who fled thither either from the desolation of Jerusalem by Vespasian or from Judea, wasted and depopulated by the Romans, Persians, Saracens and Christians, or else such as came out of what Europe, whence they were banished. So they were banished from Europe. Remember, they were banished from Spain. They were banished from Portugal, out of some parts of Italy in the year 1342, out of Spain in the year 1462, out of the Low Countries in 1350 out of France in 1403, out of England in 1422. These all differ in habit and are divided into several tribes having no dominion, 
they're both wealthy wealthy and numerous now listen to this family but despised of all nations isn't that what the scripture said that you would be hated of all nations for his name's sake or in his name but despised of all nations and so abominated by the Turks that they are not admitted to be you know Muslims unless first baptized and then no otherwise made use of than to receive their customs and gather in their taxes. The Kafirs or Libertines who hold many antithetical tenets live together promiscuously without ceremonies like our families and Adamites. Following, in, following their sensuality and unbridled lust inhabiting from Mozambique to the Cape of Good Hope. The idolaters are numerous in Negro land. Okay, we're talking about Negro land. Now, who are we talking about here? Jews, black Jews. Upper and lower Ethiopia and towards the great ocean. Except as we hinted before, some few who by the industry of the Portuguese and Spaniards have been converted and baptized. So we saw in that previous one that they converted many of the people, many of the children to, to, to Christians or Roman Catholicism. Right? And they, they enslaved them. And here we see that these are the same Jews, right, from the river Niger, right, that the world hated, despised of all nations. And, and I'm making this point here, family, so that you can, you can understand that this has been going on for a long time, that you are despised of all nations and today you are still despised of all nations what is going to restore you is your God when they realize who you are and that they have killed murdered raped pillaged God's chosen people then some of them are going to have repentance but until then they despise you You are still hated today. Don't expect your captors to willingly give you anything. However, the plagues of war will change their minds. We must ask for reparations, even though they will not give it to us willingly. John 16, 2. They will put you out of the synagogue. In fact, the time is coming when anyone who kills you will think they are offering a service to God. So a lot of this happened, you know, after 70 AD. A lot of this happened in during the Inquisition. As I showed you, because a lot of those things that occurred, you know, when they were sending them to Sao Tome, kicking them out of Spain and out of Portugal and sending them to Africa and, and St. Tome, all of that was around the time of the Inquisition. OK, so that a lot of that was building up slowly over the years to the fulfillment, of, I guess, the, the crescendo right of, of the Inquisition. It's all have been about you and they lie about everything. If you go read about what happened in Europe, they also put you out of the synagogue. Very interesting read. Now, the problem I have with some of our conscious community is that none of them want to look at the evidence of our history. None of them want to look at the evidence that we are the true Hebrew Israelites of the Bible. Now, whether or not you're a believer, that's, that's another thing. But the facts are facts. History is history. Proof is proof. Then when you get in the Bible, you see that the Bible validates that. That everything that has happened that you read in history, like I've showed you, is in the scriptures. Now, which is why the European Christians would take a lot of the scriptures and apply it to the church. And so they say all of these things are going to happen to the church in the last days. And a lot of this was prophecy about Israel. The true Hebrew Israelites. Deuteronomy 28, 60. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships. By the way whereof I spake unto thee, thou shalt see it no more again. And there ye shall be sold unto your enemies for bondmen and bondwomen. And no one shall buy you. 
So you can you can rephrase that last piece of the verse as no one shall redeem you. No one shall get you out of it. No one shall save you from it. This was the transatlantic slave trade. And, and, and for those who like truth, whether you white, black, Hispanic, Chinese, whatever, just look at the evidence. Look at the documentation. Look at the history. The, the people who you call black, the people who you call African Americans, are the true Hebrew Israelites of the Bible. That Bible you say you believe. Not only can we prove it biblically, we can prove it historically. Now to the family out there. Look, family, don't get upset about none of this. Okay? Don't get angry at the Gentiles. You know, don't cuss them. But don't expect them to change their minds. They're not. They don't like you. And I'm not talking about one-offs. You got one-offs, individuals, right? But as a people, they don't like you. And they have trained the rest of the world to not like you. So you're not going to get any support. But the Most High is going to show that He loves you. The Most High says, I will make them bow at your feet and know that I have loved thee. Because you have been forsaken and no one loves you but the Most High. So, my thing is this. And this is to the ADOS people out there. I'm all for the movement. I say, I think you should ask for it and demand it. And I think you should be specific about America. And let everyone else be specific about the nation that they're in. Now, do I think you're going to get anything from your effort? No. No, 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 no. It's not. You're not going to change the heart of a people who hate you. You're not going to change the heart of a people who can watch your children be killed by police and say nothing. And not demand justice. You're not going to get anything from a people like that. You're not. There's no love for you. But the Most High loves you. So that's why you need to have patience. And sit back and watch the hand of the Lord. Because he promised he will deliver you from all the lands you were scattered to into captivity. And all these people who hate you. They're going to realize you ought to see that the Lord had blessed. Lisa Haven ain't going to be talking about no race war because she'll be fighting against God. In conclusion, the ADOS movement and others are correct to ask for reparations. In fact, to demand reparations. However, as you can see with liberals like Bernie Sanders, it is not within them to do anything about it. The request is, like I stated, a call to let my people go. It is also the rattling of the bones. The bones are shaking. Hey, we're here. We're alive. We're awake. We're unified. It's going to take a while. But a nation shall be born in a day. I know that unbelievers within Israel will not believe this. So I'm talking about all of those other people out there who are Kemet and, you know, secular, secular, secularists. <laughs> Sorry about that, family. They're not going to believe this. They're not going to believe the spiritual side of this battle. And they're going to continue to fight, which is cool. I mean, we should fight. But they need to be prepared for what's coming in, on this nation and not get caught up in it. And we should show forth love and compassion and mercy and grace. Let's not get caught up in this hatred that they're spewing. Because, you know, it's like Lisa Haven She's trying to show herself as a righteous person standing against this injustice call for reparations. But what she's doing is she's standing against the people who have been persecuted and tormented for over 400 years. Forgetting their due. But she, you know, she's like everyone else. She don't love us. She don't love us. A lot of these churches don't love us. Which is why you don't truly have the word of God being preached in a lot of these churches today. There's a remnant out there, though. There's a remnant of Gentiles out there who do love us. There's a remnant out there who will be with us. And I know some of you Hebrew Israelites don't believe that, but that's, that's on you. You're going to watch the hand of the Lord, and you're going to see some of those people coming back with us. That's a fact. And I'm not going to stand in the way of God. 
The 400 years is coming to an end. Evil is increasing like never before. Watch the Most High move to deliver you. Man will not get the glory, for the Yah will get the glory. So America's heart is going to be hardened. The more you ask for reparations, the more they're going to resist. The more they talk about reparations, the more they're going to talk about race war. The more you talk about reparations, the more they're going to talk about us uniting against this, this Russian bot. Because they know they have a, a big payday that coming at, I mean, you know, a big time coming where they got to pay. Pay what you owe. They're going to pay. They don't want to pay, but they will pay. That's what the scriptures teach. I'm just a messenger. You ain't got to like it. It is what it is. But I tell you one thing, I'm not going to hate nobody. I'm not going to do that. I don't walk in hate. I walk in love. Because that's what the Most High wants. And that gives me peace. Because guess what? The battle's not mine. The battle's whose? The Lord's. I'm just a vessel to do His will, to speak His word. And uh, those Gentiles who listen, they will save them, their souls and their families. But the ones who don't listen are going to be judged. That's the scripture. Read it for yourself. Now, in order to understand it, you got to realize who the true people are. You got to realize who the true people are. That's it. Look for yourself. Look at the truth. Instead of being like everyone else and ignoring it. Because that's what they do. They think if they ignore it, it's going to go away. Some of them went in there and, and opened up a little book and said, Ooh, it sure look like they the people. Some of them went in there and read Deuteronomy 28. Ooh, that sure look like the people. And then they turn around and hope it goes away. But it's not going away. And we know it's not going away. Right, family? Pay what you owe, Gentiles. Pay what you owe. God give you a space to repent. But the Bible said you would not. He gave you a chance to be healed, but he said you would not. I'm trying to help you. I understand we all need a Savior. Both Jew and Gentile need a Savior. We all broken people. Now you all have done some evil dirt on us. Don't get me wrong. And y'all gonna pay. I mean, that's scripture. I'm sorry. You don't like it. That's scripture. Some people don't want you to talk scripture. They want to punish you for preaching the word. They want you to smooth it out and say everything going to be okay. Well, only if you repent. Only if you repent. Well, I just wanted to make this statement, family, about what I see about the reparations movement and the ADOS movement. And I do support it. I just don't think anything's going to come of it until the Most High moves. And I think that, you know, and I know really from what I see in the scriptures, judgment is coming upon this nation. And it's already here. And they don't see it. God said he would have healed them. But now they're forsaken. He gave them a chance of repentance, but they don't want to re repent. I mean, I I'm sorry we've tried. We've tried to warn you, but you don't listen. And I, I think that's all I have to say about this. So if you love what we do, please become a Patreon member and support us if you feel that you are blessed by what we teach. So, you know, a lot of y'all quick, you know, to support news ministries. Um, I wouldn't even call them ministries, you know, uh, news sites. You know, some of y'all sign up for them and they don't teach you nothing. All they do is talk about black politics or white politics or, you know, worldly things. But you're not learning anything here. You're learning something about the word of God, but y'all don't want to support us. I mean, that's cool. But guess what? We ain't going to always be here. I'm not threatening anything or nothing. I'm just saying, you, you know, there's a time to sow, a time to reap. And, you know, you know, be a blessing. That's all I'm saying. I mean, some of y'all just come here and suck it up, but and y'all blessed by it, but y'all don't want to support us. And so there's less that we can do that we want to do. But it's all good because we trust in the Lord. I mean, you know, those who give, those who the Lord wants to give, and I don't want to put no 
shame on anybody. You know, do as you're led. Do as you're led. You know, we cool with it. But, you know, I think we should, at the very least, say, hey, family, think about it. Love y'all with the love of the Messiah. Shalom, family. Your captivity is ending.